Hello guys again and welcome back to the channel from the past week I want to show you uh, an interesting blitz game that I played I played against uh, an FM uh, that was a three minute game it was French winner defense why did I opt for this game because I played one fairly interesting attractive opening uh, full of I would say unexpected moves difficult moves sacrifices but it's considered to be very strong for white uh, because you rely on the bishop pair on activity and you sack some pawns it's uh, considered to be and it's called Kasparov's variation uh, he, he was the first one who used it against Wishy Anand like 20-30 years ago I believe so let's go also uh, lots of guys keep sending me messages hey Maya uh, please uh, give us something against the winner word defense find on the channel I already published out a couple of times let's go I was white I played e4 the guy played e6 d4 d5 knight c3 and he went for the winner word defense on the channel you can find Aleka and Marazzi a gambit with knight g 2 you can find an interesting very lovely queen d3 variation and I opted for the main line with e5 simply because uh, they're threatening to take on e4 so I play e5 taking away the f6 square for the knight so I should be okay with this one okay everything is normal everything is cool so I played e5 the guy went for c5 the main move absolutely the most logical one because they just uh, try to undermine the center they want to take on d4 so I just played a3 also the main move they gotta take on c3 I say they gotta take because they have a line with bishop a5 in which case I'm suggesting you to to check out the analysis after b4 where white just has better game <coughs> he captured on c3 b takes c3 and here we have the first tabia uh, there are moves such as knight e7 queen a5 and knight c6 my opponent went for 97 uh, a very interesting move that uh, international master from my city Maximovic used to play was knight uh, c6 while at the same time one of the most interesting variations for black is this portish hook variation with the idea queen a5 bishop d2 and queen a4 where he pressures like this but more importantly he's fixing the pawn on a3 and he's not allowing us to play a4 bishop c1 bishop a3 afterwards anyways my opponent uh, opted for the most common thing with knight e7 he just developed this knight and that's a regular way of developing this knight here i opted uh, for the h4 which i like a lot it's kasparov's idea of pushing this pawn all the way up to h6 uh, no matter what i do you just want to play h5 followed by h6 except if they go with the queen a5 now it has some similarities between portish hook variation and the main line so after like queen a5 uh, i played bishop d2 and he went for c takes c takes and queen a4 and here i just have to stop and to give you like the most important uh, explanations about this variation uh, so they kind of fix this pawn on a3 as as a weakness in some moments they're pressuring the pawn on d4 at the same time pressuring the pawn on c2 and there is only one good thing for white in this position that's the bishop pair and the fact that you can push this pawn up to h6 all the way there but before i show you the game i just have to give you like a bit of education about this line i gotta tell you that believe it or not we almost never defend the pawn on d4 actually we're even happy to give it up believe it or not and sometimes or let's just say many times pawn on c2 why so because we're happy especially to lose the d4 pawn because then both of our bishops are gonna get open and if we manage to open up the position for our bishops then our bishops will have open diagonals will have like good activity and the game is gonna be like really really questionable for black and that's why i went for h5 i just know that most of you would never play h5 in this position because simply would say hey, hey, hey calm down buddy you're just uh, lost the pawn on d4 my opponent went for h6 and it's always 
uh, almost uniquely the best type of thing here. Uh, you don't want to uh, let white going with h6 and pushing that pawn all the way there, breaking on the dark squares in the king's side. Uh, I was expecting he would take on d4, in which case I would play knight f3, defending the pawn on e5, harassing the queen with tempo, and developing another piece. When I have a threat of rook h4, when I have a possibility to place my rook on the open b file, at the same time to break with h6 on the king's side and in the dark squares, in some moments breaking on the queen's side even with c4, uh, where I'm absolutely, where I absolutely developed all my minor pieces and my opponent has the queen in the middle of nowhere and a little bit questionable knight on e7 because they gotta lose the tempo for h6, I really, really like and prefer this position for white my opponent didn't fall for that he played h6 and i played knight f3 now i'm developing my piece i got some space on the king's side and i'm just defending the pawn on d4 he played knight c6 and here i played another uh good attempt uh to force my opponent to take on d4 here bishop d3 i'm just completing my development i can now think whether i want to play short castle or maybe rook h4 going on the rook <coughs> on the fourth rank and uh, doing the fourth lifting uh, my opponent captured on d4 he captured on d4 and uh, i'm always happy when they do it because now my bishops especially the dark square bishop they just start to uh, have like um, a very a joyful time here uh, here I went for the Kasparov's idea of, uh, in that game against uh, Wishy and End where you put your king in kind of safety on f1 you don't want to make castle you want to make artificial castle that's why I told you most of the moves from today's game you won't be able to understand uh, if I'm actually referring to and this video to those lower rated guys and medium level guys because those are really difficult moves well, most of you guys who are just who just play in advanced chess, you would know what I'm doing here. I'm threatening here rook h4, which means that when I when he takes on f3, it's not gonna be with check, and I'm gonna be threatening the queen on a4. So I played king f1. Now I gotta emphasize an importance of one game, and move uh, back to 2013 and Barcelona. At that time, I was. Uh, personal coach of Grandmaster Eric Hansen, Chas Bragai, and we went there to Barca. Uh, he came second in that tournament after the GM Balok Chaba. And uh, Eric uh, played against a uh, pretty good GM Narciso Dublon from Spain. And when Narciso captured on d4, Eric played absolutely the best move, Rook b1. Uh, at that time, I remember <coughs> we've been analyzing this. You just want to go with rook b4, threatening this queen and the knight. Uh, point is that if they just do something, they can develop bishop because you will take on b7. And you threaten rook b4, knight f3, queen f3, queen a3 doesn't work because of bishop b5 discovery and you win the queen. Uh, after Narciso played knight e6, Eric played absolutely the best move bishop before. And at that time, we analyzed this. Even nowadays, I checked with the latest tangents. This is considered to be the best for white. What's the point? The point is if they take, we just capture. Now we're threatening both, queen and the knight. They gotta include check. They once again cannot take because of discovery check and uh, you're just winning the queen on a3. So they would have to go with queen a5, you give check and after castles, he has terrible problems with the weak king. I wanna play rook f4, I wanna play queen g3, I wanna, you can't play bishop d7 because I'll take it, b7 is hanging. Everything looks so difficult for black in this position. Although I played king f1, my opponent captured and played bishop d7. <coughs> in that famous game uh, between uh, Kasparov and Anand, if I recall good enough, it was something like b6 with the idea of bishop a6. And uh, don't ever worry about this position because all uh, you have to do here is just to avoid for example this exchange with the king g1 and even when you take and when you want to take you're just going to take it in your own fashion anyways 
after well, why because simply the, if they if you don't play this but for example if you play something else they will play bishop a6 and they will threaten some queen c2 ideas that's why i'm telling you king g1 is important thing he played bishop d7 and he wants to go with this here it was once again time to prevent this with a rook b1 preventing bishop a5 threatening this one but for some reason i said okay i'm not afraid if if he played and if he'd gone for b6 and bishop a6 i would anyways play king g1 uh but i i said okay i don't want to uh, avoid this light square bishop exchange but probably i should by playing rook b1 i play this and he now executes my bishop here that's a clever idea because when i captured threatening his rook he first uh, captured on d3 and then played rook g8 i was satisfied with this position because now who's gonna stop my h pawn and believe it or not they decided the game and that's why i actually like this example he went queen d4 threatening my rook and the pawn here and here i played rook e1 he came up with check i saw of course the connection between the queen and the bishop and played king g1 i even found one tournament game played between one polish im and uh, a german fm uh, like this position is according to the engine considered to be unclear or let's just say around equal i disagree somehow i prefer white's practical chances here somehow to me king uh, on e8 looks weaker believe it or not than my king it's uh, you know like uh surrounded by pretty good amount of white pieces and somehow that h pawn i always consider very strong my opponent played queen f3 he wanted to make me one move i played bishop g5 i saw that i wanted to go with queen f6 here and if he captures bishop captures and to promote the pawn he played queen g4 threatening on g2 and the bishop and i saw f4 and this was the only big mistake by my opponent in the game he played king d7 he was supposed to play like this queen f6 and queen g3 objectively speaking position is unclear or let's just say around equal with some chances for a perpetual check but somehow uh, he played a normal move if you ask me king d7 although normal move at first glance because he's connecting on the back rank but he's actually uh having lots of difficulties and problems after my queen f6 and i believe in the blitz game when you see something like this you probably gotta uh, take your chances and try something like rook g5 but okay i i'm, I'm winning now he played knight f5 i capture capture and involved my rook into the action as the last piece he played king d4 this is a little bit funny the guy is just trying to meet me kind of with this idea i saw what, what 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 was he trying to do i played h6 i played h7 and when he played rook c2 which uh, kind of looks scary uh, i was very happy with my finding rook d3 so i'm sacking my rook in order to capture on d5 and by capturing on d5 we check i'm defending g2 here i just promoted the queen and he resigned because he couldn't move the knight he couldn't check me here he didn't have a single check in this position and even if he does in this position rook g2 i would play king g2 and after knight f3 i would just go with this and here the queen on g8 decides the game it's a pretty interesting game but once again i didn't give you this game because it was one of the uh, you know like most beautiful masterpieces you've seen but because i just wanted to give you on the channel also some prospects about the uh, win over defense and how do you play the main line for white thanks and keep enjoying the content on the channel. See you. Bye-bye, guys.